If you like the hat that I'm wearing or cheer for the team, thumbs up, thumbs down if you see it. This is the Memphis Tigers. All right. And um, this would be the Tennessee Vols. Uh huh. And let's see the St. Louis Cardinals. Any baseball fan? Mm hmm. And last but not least, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Don't hate. I see we got a lot of Pittsburgh Squealer fans and some 40 Whiner fans. <laughs> well, each one of these caps represent a team that I have developed some affinity for. Whatever baptism is, baptism is an outward expression of an inward cleansing, an outward expression of an inward cleansing. Something happens uh, to me. Baptism, this outward expression of an inward cleansing, it signifies the team that I'm on. That's why when we baptize, we say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that's the team that we are on. Or you can say in the name of Jesus, because that signifies the team that I'm on. Baptism is my signature. It's my badge. It is the team that I am on. It is called a sacrament. A sacrament, as Pastor David said, last week was communion. Today is baptism. A sacrament is a sacred oath or pledge. It's a sacred oath oath or pledge or a covenant. We call it the covenant of grace, baptism and the Lord's Supper or communion. These are signs and seals of our covenant of grace. A sign is something that we see humanly visible. It's something we do. A seal is something God does and it is invisible. So a sacrament taken together are holy signs and seals of the covenant of grace. We're going to look at this passage and intersperse baptisms throughout uh, this particular message. In Acts chapter 16, the apostle Paul was going to a new part of town, and uh, he had um, not been there before, and he was looking for people, and as was his custom, he went down by the riverside, and this is what happened, Acts 16, I'm reading. On the Sabbath day, we went outside of the city gate by the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and spoke to the women who were gathered there. A God-fearing woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth, that is, she was a businesswoman, clothing, a clothier, from the city of Thyatira was listening. Listen at this. The Lord opened her heart to respond to what Paul was saying. That's the gospel. After she and her household were baptized, she urged us, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Here is the sermon in a sentence. Spiritual baptism is done by God. Water baptism is putting our faith in action. Spirit baptism, that's done by God, invisibly. Water baptism is putting our faith in action that is visible. I want you to read this definition with me. I think you have it online. Let's read it together. And we're going to pause at every comma, park at every period. We ready? Spirit baptism happens at the... Wait. 
Water baptism is the... All right, I'm not going to have you repeat it, but catch this. There are two baptisms. The first is spiritual baptism. That's invisible. That's what God does. It happens at the very moment that we surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. At that very moment, God the Father begins cleansing us. And something begins to change in us as he mysteriously and invisibly immerses me in the body of Christ. I don't understand it all. I don't see it. But he begins to invisibly and mysteriously immerse me, uh, baptize me into the body of Christ. My life begins to change. Sometimes I see those changes immediately. Other times they are over a period of time. Water baptism or physical baptism is validating that fact. It is the act that validates the fact that spiritual baptism has taken place at the very moment that I surrender to the Lordship of Christ. So baptism is three things. Number one, it's personal identification with Jesus Christ. It is personal identification with Jesus Christ. Just as I identify with one of these teams, baptism is personal identification with Jesus Christ. It's personal. It's private. Circumcision was the sign of the covenant in the Old Testament. Baptism is the sign of the covenant in the New Testament. Let's take a look at Genesis 17, the old covenant of circumcision. This is my covenant between me and you, God said to Abraham, and your offspring after you, which you are to keep. Every one of your males must be circumcised. You must circumcise in the flesh of your foreskin to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and you. Throughout your generations, every male among you is to be circumcised when they have understood the whole law of Moses. Ah, I got you off that, didn't it? No. You're to be circumcised at what? Eight days old. How much of the Mosaic law do they understand at eight days old? Nothing. My covenant will be marked in your flesh as a permanent covenant. Now, girls were not circumcised, but if you were in the family, then this circumcision transposed to everyone in the house being under the covenant. And then Paul in the New Testament makes the linkage. Colossians 2. When you came to Christ, you were what? circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. There is the linkage. And with him, you were raised to new life because you trusted in the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. And so the spiritual circumcision or the spiritual baptism has to do with the new covenant of grace. That's why when Lydia heard Paul proclaim the gospel, she and her whole household were baptized. You note this word household. It very likely indicates there were children in that household, either children or infants. They didn't understand what Lydia understood but because she understood, then she had her whole household baptized, that is, under the covenant of grace. In a moment, we're going to ask, in fact, if you have a child, an infant, to be baptized, I'm going to ask you to begin to make your way down front while this video is playing. Watch this. Come on. He, um started visiting back in May of 2020? No, we started visiting... It's fall of 21. Fall of 21, okay. And um, we were looking for a multicultural ministry, um, and um, God led us here. Why did you want to, to have no baptized? So um, we thought it was a critical role in parenthood to transfer the faith to our child. Um, and we thought, you know, 
that it was important to do so because God has a plan for our child and we knew that he um, had a good plan and it was filled with purpose and it was filled with hope. So it was more so as a reminder of our calling as parents uh, more than it was for the child's benefit. But what are some of your aspirations for for, for Noah? Uh, first and foremost, that he um, grows to love the Lord, choose Jesus um, prayerfully at a young age, you know, but that he ultimately chooses him, um, chooses to follow him, that his heart grows tender towards him, um, that he, you know, grows to grows in the knowledge of his will for his life, and just that we will be Holy Spirit led in um, helping him to discover God's purpose, you know, for his life. And by the way, you know, we live at home, um, that he would see it firsthand yeah. through us, um, the way we we walk in faith, the way we um, honor God, he would see it first. So baptism is identification with Jesus Christ. That's what these parents are about to do right now. If you will come forward, if you would. These children are not being Christianized. They are being baptized. And these parents are promising to bring their children up in the word and the will and the ways of God so that one day of their own volition, they will believe and surrender to Christ. If you will come forward, if you will, you are perfect. All right, Dad, you are doing the work today. All right. Who do we have? Full Christian name. Uh, Christian Jacob Hilgeman. Hilgeman? Mm -hmm. Christian Jacob Hilgeman, you're a child of the covenant, loved of God, baptized you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless y'all. Amen. You may return. Beautiful. All right. Very good. This support system here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who do we have? Gray Merrick Johnson. Greg Merrick? Gray. Like Gray. Color. Oh, Gray Merrick Johnson. Look at me. Gray, child of the covenant, <laughs> loved of God, <laughs> baptized you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Way to go, Gray. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Wonderful. Who do we have here? This is McKenna Faith Athene Gallagher. All right. This is part of the Chokichi family? Hey, how about that? <laughs> McKenna Faith Athene Gallagher. Athene Gallagher. You're a child of the covenant, loved of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. She's awake now. <laughs> Amen. All right. Bless you. Beautiful. Here's the second thing about baptism. It's a public declaration of faith. Personal, private identification with Jesus Christ. But baptism is a public declaration of the faith. That is, those set of principles that have been handed down to us by Jesus himself. Not a faith, but the faith. I am publicly declaring, as Katie doing the children's message says, I am wearing something, the badge of baptism. Let's read what Lydia did again. A god fearing woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira. She was a businesswoman entrepreneur of her day. She was listening, and the Lord opened her heart to respond to what Paul was saying, that is, he was sharing with her the good news of the gospel. The Lord opened her heart. After she and her household were baptized, after she and her household were baptized, so she heard something, and she responded to something. She responded with a public declaration, a public declaration. Now, when we surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, spiritual baptism, 
something happens to change us inside. Notice this word household again, because in this word household, Lydia believed and it transferred to her whole house. Any person who's spiritually baptized and water baptized, one person can change the spiritual chemistry in the whole house. You didn't catch that. Let me say it over here. I said, when one person who's spiritually baptized and water baptized, they can change the chemistry in the whole house. Doesn't mean that everybody in the house is a Jesus follower, but it means that the spiritual chemistry will change in that house. One person has that power because of the gospel. So the public declaration of my faith. Familiar passage, Romans says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? The word means rescued. It means to be expanded. It means to be liberated. One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, everyone who believes on him shall not be put to shame. I'm making it public. I'm making it public. Uh, listen to this um, video. And for those who are teens, if you will begin to make your way down front. Watch this. So I've been coming to Hope since before I was born. Um, my mom went here and then whoever she married my dad, my dad started coming. And I also went to preschool at Hope. Oh, so really? really my entire life. What made you feel led to be baptized? So my parents didn't have me baptized whenever I was an infant or whenever I was a little kid. And I really felt like taking ownership of my faith uh, last year in June because I had gone on the spring break trip. We went to Colorado, we were skiing and everything. And just being there really made me refocus. And I wanted to finally dedicate my life in front of everyone. Quite a proclamation, that's yeah. awesome, that's awesome. What, um, how has surrendering your life to Jesus Christ impacted your, your everyday, everyday life? Uh, it's given me a lot of security and comfort because that's something that I just, I've kind of lacked. And I know that's always going to be there and is always with me is really, really important. When you were baptized, was, there, was that impactful to you, the baptism itself? I think it was, well, one, because uh, the day that I got baptized, Emily's son, Graham, was also baptized. Yes. So we also have that little connection. But I think it's just impacted me to be more confident in my faith and more outward about it. All right, you're here at the support system. You are. Come right ahead. Okay. Give me your full Christian name. London Aaliyah Stubbs. You said? London Aaliyah Stubbs. London Aaliyah Stubbs, child of the covenant, loved of God, upon the profession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in obedience to him who is the head of the church, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Now, how many of you have ever downloaded an app? Mm-hmm. You know, one thing that annoys me is when they make me click the button that says, I have acknowledged or read the terms and conditions. I can't even get the app until I click the button. Sometimes I try to fool it and I just go ahead and it says, error. You gotta click the button. Even when I pay for an app with my own money, I have to agree to the terms and conditions. Listen, that is like baptism. In fact, it's like the sacraments. I am 
clicking the button, so to speak, refreshing that I am agreeing with the terms and conditions as set forth in the Word of God. In fact, every time I take communion, I am validating that fact. I am agreeing with the terms and conditions. And when people are baptized, they are clicking and saying, I agree with the terms and conditions as laid out in the Word of God. So it's a personal, private identification with Jesus Christ, but it's a public declaration of the faith. And then lastly, baptism is the promise of separation to live a Jesus-type lifestyle. It is a promise of separation to live a Jesus-type lifestyle. When people were coming to be baptized by John the baptizer, because he was talking about a kingdom that was to come, and they wanted to be a part of that kingdom, they came to be baptized, but John says, let me first see if you're willing to adopt a new lifestyle. Let's read it, what he says. When the crowds came to John for baptism, the crowds asked him, what should we do? John replied, if you have two shirts, give one to the poor. If you have food, share it with those who are hungry. Even corrupt tax collectors came to be baptized. And they asked, teacher, what should we do? He replied, collect no more taxes than the government requires. What should we do, asked some of the soldiers. And John replied, don't extort money or make false accusations and be content with your pay. You see what he was doing? He was basically saying to them, you've got to adopt a new lifestyle. This is a Jesus-type lifestyle. This is how Jesus lived. My question and challenge to all of us is, Am I living this Jesus-type lifestyle? Those of us who've been baptized, am I living up to that baptism? Three things that John said. Number one, he says, if you have more clothes than you need, share it with someone else. If you have more food, share it with someone else. This has to do with selfishness and compassion. A new Jesus-type lifestyle says, I will not live a life of selfishness, but a life of compassion. If God has blessed me with more than I need, when I discover that need, then I am going to share it. That's what John told these crowds, to live up to this baptism. And then these tax collectors who were noted to be corrupt and to take more than they should have, they said, well, we want to be baptized too. And John said, you have to live with a different personal and professional integrity. Don't cheat people. Don't take more than you should take. That's personal and professional integrity. And then the soldiers came and said, what do we do? He said, in order to live up to this baptism, then you must also not abuse your power and authority. Don't make false accusations. Be content with your pay and not try to take other people's wages. You have to change and live up to this baptism. Don't abuse your power. Let's look at this last video and then I'll close. So we first started coming to Hope in 2016. Uh, we had moved here from Portland, Oregon. We like to say we we're on a church journey. We were trying to find the right fit. Uh, we had gone to a lot of churches. And uh, I think as soon as we walked into Hope, uh, we looked at each other and said, I think we finally found it. What touched you about, about Hope? I think it was, um, you know, for us in our journey, you know, we're both believers. Uh, my wife was baptized young, Susie was, uh, I was not. And with Hope's mission of, of reaching out and engaging the unchurched, to us it wasn't necessarily that we weren't believers or we weren't going to church, but we were missing something in that journey. And uh, the, uh, the openness, the, uh, you know, 
the lack of judgment, but the ability to come in and, and get involved. Uh, that's all stuff we were looking for. What uh, pointed you toward wanting to be baptized and you know how, how would that process work with you? Yeah, for me, and, and I'll admit, I, I think I waited too long. Uh, I was looking at a point in my life where I felt that I was ready. Uh, I mean, I think I was trying to get to a point where in my heart, I felt that I was worthy of being baptized. Um, now, the mistake I made is um, I, I could have kept waiting forever, and I don't know yeah. that I would have been there. <laughs> right. <laughs> so luckily, I, I finally realized that being able to be a, a leader of my family in faith right. and being able to raise my son in a way that, uh, in a godly way, I, I, I needed to take that step. How, how did that, during that baptism, how did that impact impact you as you went forward to, to be baptized? Do you remember that? Oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah, it um, it, it was one of those moments I'll never forget. And, and it's, I, I think you go into it thinking this is going to change the way I think and the way I live, but you don't quite understand. It's just gonna change the way that you think and the way that you carry yourself. It, it's amazing looking back over just the last 12 months where we were versus where we are. I think it's instructive, amen, with something Shane said. I, I wanted to wait till I felt worthy and really ready. But he concluded that if I waited for that, I probably would never be baptized. None of us are worthy. We rely on the cleansing power of the Lord in our lives. We meet him exactly where we are, and then he will take us where he wants us to be. We're not worthy in and of ourselves. Before I close, let me address the issue of rebaptism. Rebaptism. <clears throat> because if you were baptized as an infant or even a child or a teenager, and you grow up older and you say, you know, I understand better. I want to be rebaptized. Let me say it is totally unnecessary. Now, when I was a Baptist pastor for 10 years, and when I came down for baptism, you know what I was taught to say? I was taught to say, now, have you been baptized by the hands of a Baptist preacher? But as far as the Bible is concerned, when I have been baptized as an infant or even as a child or I come to further understanding in my adult life, I don't need to be rebaptized. Remember, spiritual baptism happens at the very moment that I surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And if I do that even after infant baptism, that is the most important baptism. I don't need to be water baptized again. That's the moment that I am born again. And so I don't need to be born again, again. Some of you will catch that on the way home. <laughs> and it may settle some issue. Now, I may need assurance, and we can help you with the assurance of your salvation, but rebaptism is not necessary. And so there's a private identification, personal identification with Jesus Christ, public declaration of the faith, and a promise of separation to live a Jesus-type lifestyle. The challenge for me and to you, most of us who've been baptized, is living up to that baptism. And I'm reminded of this wonderful song that I keep in my soul to remind me of my commitment to him. Well, it's taken all this time just to see what I really had, knowing someone as wonderful as you. For you've done so much for me, more than a friend would do. I want to know now what I can do for you. Lord, it seems like most of my life I've been thinking about myself, even when I learned to call on you. But no matter what I did, you were always there to see me through. Now, I want to know what I can do for you. The songwriter says, I know what I'll do. I will give you all my time and all the love that I can find. I'm going to lay it all on the line like you did once for me. I'm going to change all my plans, put my life in your hand, and I'll try hard to understand what you want me to be. 
Because, Lord, it's taken all this time for my heart to be taught to say, whatever you want, whatever you want, that's what I want too. Now, I know it won't even up the score, but it's the least that I can do. I want to know what I can do for you. When we come to baptism, we live up to a Jesus-type lifestyle. Where do I need to do that in my life? Selfishness or compassion, personal, professional integrity, abuse of power. Let's pray together. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for spiritual baptism. For at that very moment, God the Father invisibly, mysteriously places us into the body of Christ and begin cleansing us as we commit to his lordship. And thank you that throughout the process, you are sanctifying us. You are taking us through the process. Thank you for this spiritual circumcision where you're cutting away the powerful habits of our sinful nature. Some immediately, others over a period of time. We thank you for this covenant, this sign, this seal, because we know you never break your word, even when we break ours. So we ask that you would help us to remember and live up to our baptisms. In the name of the King of kings and Lord of lords, even Jesus our Savior, we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. We love to pray for you and celebrate alongside you. Please share anything going on in your life with us at hopechurchmemphis.com slash prayer and subscribe to the Hope Church Memphis YouTube channel to experience previous worship services and more. Have a great week.